a glove full of bullet ants, a kiss with a cobra, a casual chat with Leo. This jackass spinoff was often more wild than its Johnny Knoxville-led predecessor, but how much of Wild Boys was actually real and how much was just pretend? Stay tuned to find out. After watching an episode of Wild Boys, the origins of the name might sound obvious. Chris Pontius and Steve-O are, in fact, the Wild Boys, as they perform outrageous stunts with animals out in the wild. Yet audience members might be interested in the actual thought process that went into the decision to name the show Wild Boys, which Pontius opened up about in a 2014 interview with Journey of a Frontman, saying, For Wild Boys, we were originally talking about names for the show and the stupid names. And Dmitry Elioskovich was like, I got one. He put on that Duran Duran song, The Wild Boys. I thought we should use a Z instead of an S to make it even kookier, and everyone agreed. I think that helped the title clear anyway. Though Steve-O and Chris Pontius try to be transparent with their fans when it comes to realistic stunts, and especially where they're shooting, there's one stunt in particular that was a bit misleading. When asked about a stunt with a lion being grabbed by the tail, Steve-O said on his podcast, Steve-O's Wild Ride, With Jackass, we were very, very honest. We had integrity. We never tried to deceive the audience. That was Jackass. But with Wild Boys, we took liberties to pretend that we were in Africa when actually we were filming in California. For the stunt, Steve-O and Pontius were in a two-person zebra suit. Steve-O admitted that it was not in fact a wild lion that they stumbled upon while on safari in Africa, saying, We quickly found out that a lion in the wild on safari in Africa, you don't get in a zebra suit and try to play around with that thing. Audiences might want their reality TV to be authentic, but in the case of Wild Boys, taking certain liberties shouldn't be questioned. The fact of the matter is, the Wild Boys still played with a lion. This wasn't the only time they fudged some of the details when it came to a stunt with an animal, either. On Steve-O's Wild Ride, Steve-O explained, Every time that we filmed interacting with a lion, like every time, we were always pretending that we were in Africa, but in fact, we were in California at a place called Hollywood Animals. With that said, in his book Professional Idiot, a memoir, Steve O. wrote that every time wild animal expert Manny Puig was with them, they were in the United States, despite possibly claiming otherwise in the episode, in an attempt to make a more entertaining show. This might come as a surprise for many audiences, but Wild Boys had a longer run than the Jackass TV series. The latter franchise, of course, made the jump to the big screen to the tune of four feature films. But before that, Jackass ran for three seasons and 25 episodes, while Wild Boys went on a four-season run that lasted 32 episodes. Despite the longer tenure, Wild Boys is a far more under-the-radar series, while Jackass entered the mainstream and has stayed there with every subsequent film. In fact, Wild Boys wasn't the only successful Jackass spinoff. Viva La Bam, starring Bam Margera, aired for five seasons and 40 episodes. Wild Boys also featured other Jackass stars from time to time, including Jackass co-star Johnny Knoxville and Wee Man. Though Ultimate Predator isn't technically part of the Jackass universe, it was created by Manny Puig, who appeared on Jackass as well as some of the Wild Boys excursions. That's the, the most stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. The film features Puig interacting with wildlife, most notably sharks. It also brings the Wild Boys group back together as it features Steve-O and Chris Pontius. So it's sort of a Wild Boys spin-off, just more informational, although Puig still has encounters with dangerous animals. That said, Ultimate Predator is distinctly different from Wild Boys, as Puig routinely educated the boys as opposed to performing absurd stunts. Nevertheless, if you ever want to see Puig interacting with the wildlife outside of a show as bizarre as Wild Boys, and you also want to see Steve-O and Pontius join in on the party, then Ultimate Predator is an ideal follow-up. It's not uncommon for a famous person to rub shoulders with a fellow famous person. It is, however, uncommon for someone to have a conversation with a random stranger and realize later on that you are speaking with Leonardo DiCaprio. But Chris Pontius isn't just anyone, and in addition to all of his other wild stories, he also pulled off this feat. When asked what his weirdest encounter with a celebrity was during a 2022 interview with Uproxx, Pontius responded with an anecdote about an interaction he had with someone at an event, saying, I talked to this guy for like an hour about animals and all the crazy things we'd done. And then the next day, my friend's like, oh, last night when you were talking to Leo, and I was like, that was Leonardo DiCaprio? I had no idea it was him. The key takeaway, Chris Pontius is not one to be starstruck, and Leonardo DiCaprio is a fan of Wild Boys. Further proof that it's a show with something for everyone. 
Chris Pontius and Steve O seemed fearless, but Wild Boys fans might be surprised to discover that Pontius isn't a fan of big cats like tigers and lions. In an interview with IGN, Pontius detailed his distaste for the formidable felines when asked if there are any animals he's irrationally afraid of, saying, I don't like big cats really at all. Cats are weird and they kind of snap. I don't really like them. Even if you have a house cat, or like the cat that bit Siegfried and Roy. They've worked with these animals like their entire life, and then all of a sudden, they just killed them. Who could blame him? Despite Pontius testing his luck with wild animals over the years, it would appear he's able to push past his biggest fears. He doesn't fancy big cats, yet he's not afraid to get in the ring with them. I hear the growling from over here, so we are getting dangerously close to the Florida Panther. Dangerously close. Chris Pontius has performed a myriad of outlandish stunts over the years, yet his favorite stunt of all time is easy for him to pick, and it involved a snake. Opening up in a 2014 Journey of a Frontman interview, Pontius said, I think my favorite thing I ever did period was on Wild Boys. The biggest overcoming your own fears thing that I ever did was kissing a king cobra on the head. Typically, people don't say their favorite thing they've ever done was kissing a snake, let alone something as deadly as the King Cobra. But Pontius isn't your average stunt performer. He went on to admit that the opportunity came about when director Jeff Tremaine told him the night before that they had found some guys who had access to a non-devenomized King Cobra while they were in Indonesia. Pontius called this stunt the kiss of death, and suffice it to say, it energized him, saying, I touched him a few times and I started wanting to give it a kiss, so I just went for it. I felt like a million bucks. I felt just happy to be alive, really. It's just one more example of the many ways Wild Boys had no issue pushing the limits, whether a scene was scripted or not. We're just happy that Pontius survived his favorite stunt. Chris Pontius was made for the camera. He's comically gifted, a natural storyteller, and he's not afraid of anything. Those are excellent qualities to have, especially for any jackass cast member. I'm Ultra Mega Dude Chris Pontius, and this is my home. Pontius, to say the least, has performed some wild stunts over the years. Yet his most painful stunt was called the Glove of Ants, and it went down on Wild Boys. In a 2022 interview with Uproxx, Pontius recalled the experience, saying, it's a rite of passage for this tribe in the Amazon. You put these ants, called bullet ants, they weave them into this glove. And when boys come of age, you put this glove on that has hundreds of ants that have the most painful sting of any insect. He explained that the passage is accompanied by a shaman singing an eight minute song during which the ants are stinging the recipient hundreds of times. Chris summed it up by saying, that was by far the most painful, dreadful thing I've ever done in my life combined. It's just like venom for 24 hours and there's nothing you can do about it. So yeah, that was the worst thing. I would never do that again. Reminder, Pontius has been in the ring with Bengal tigers, lions, snapping turtles, and so on and so forth. Yet his most painful experience involved dealing with ants. That's saying something. In his book, Professional Idiot, a memoir, Steve O wrote about the decision to end Wild Boys. He recalled that the series probably could have gone more than four seasons, yet the show had become too much like Jackass. Going along with that sentiment, Steve O told The Hollywood Reporter that Wild Boys in a way spawned Jackass number two. Johnny Knoxville had previously declared that Jackass was over after the first movie. But when he joined the Wild Boys while they were filming in Russia, he seemed to have redeveloped the daredevil itch. According to With Steve O, we were on this trip in Russia at this counterterrorism training camp. Knoxville says, have the dog bite me and shoot me with the 9mm gun while the dog's biting me. And Tremaine says to Knoxville, hey, whoa, let's not do this for MTV too. If you have that in you, let's make another movie. And Knoxville had it in him, and that was number two. Ultimately, the Jackass movies would go on to partially adopt the Wild Boy style, including foreign locations and lots of animal stunts. Legendary skateboarder Tony Hawk has endured some brutal injuries over the years. It goes with the territory of being a professional daredevil. Yet, his worst injury ever actually came during an appearance on Wild Boys. Appearing on Steve-O's Wild Ride, Hawk recalled the time he tested fate and attempted to complete a loop on his skateboard for Wild Boys. Hawk, needless to say, didn't make it and crashed hard. The damage? He broke his pelvis and thumb, and he also cracked his skull. That one was pretty ugly and definitely life-threatening. I hit my head really hard. Unfortunately for Hawk, this wasn't even supposed to be his stunt. Steve-O was supposed to perform it, but had previously shattered his ankle while jumping off a porta potty 
Hawk talked about the injury during an interview with The Guardian, saying, That was a bummer. Breaking your pelvis is debilitating. You can't walk, you can't cough, you just have to sit and wait for it to heal. All good things must come to an end, and Wild Boys was no exception, with the show concluding after four seasons. However, there's still a chance the show could return, although that should be taken with a grain of salt. During an Ask Me Anything on Reddit to promote Jackass Forever, Chris Pontius and Johnny Knoxville were inevitably asked about doing a reboot of Wild Boys, and Pontius replied, I would love to do a Wild Boys reboot. I don't think it would be called Wild Boys, but I would love to do another nature-slash-adventure show, and I want Knoxville to be on it with me. There's a chance that Pontius was trying to avoid dashing fans' hopes for a revival, especially since he and Knoxville were promoting their new movie. But if his words are any indication, audience members can still hold out hope for a Wild Boys return, even if it comes with a different title. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite MTV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.